My life is in his hands. In session five of this series, I want to look at the time when I went to Sunday school, at the time when I came across a snake while playing sport and running away from home. These three events in my early years, uh, to me, were very important and formative. Let's first talk about Sunday school. See, our family had moved from Ashburton to Ferntree Gully in 1956. There were now uh, six of us and a seventh child was on the way and, and would soon be followed by two more. So on Sunday mornings, my mother and my stepfather, they wanted a bit of peace and quiet. So we were sent off to Sunday school. And you can see the picture of the Sunday school that back in the 1950s, uh, that, that I and my brothers and sisters were attending. Now this was uh, a nice Anglican uh, church, nice, quiet and peaceful. But then all of a sudden this Hammond Harvey clan turns up and we were riotous. We were out of control and I was probably one of the worst. Eventually, one of the Sunday school teachers asked, and this is most unusual thing to happen, asked that we not be allowed to come. We were so disruptive. The thing is, we had no interest in God. We had no interest in church. So in effect, <laughs> I was kicked out of Sunday school. But in the long run, it was going to be a lesson where God was going to show me that he doesn't want riotous behavior, but he does want people who know him. And we didn't know him. And so we had no care or concern about him. So I would go out into the fields with my friends to play. And one day we're playing cricket and hitting the ball and it one ball got, got bowled to me and I hit it and I put, uh, pulled it around to the left-hand side. Then another one bowled and I hit the next ball to the same spot. And so we only had two balls, so now we ran over to where the balls were and they were either side of a snake. Wow, <laughs> this, was, this was dangerous. See, children playing get into danger. But we also have to believe that because our lives are in the hand of God, whatever situation, even as ignorant children, the Lord God loves us and he's taking care of us. Another time I was playing football uh, with my friends and the ball went over a barbed wire fence and I was so keen to get the ball. I was so competitive. I ran to that barbed wire fence and I raced through it and without realizing it, the barbed wire had caught my arm and ripped quite a large uh, section of my arm. Even today, I have the scar right here um, on my arm. You know, it's quite an amazing experience. I was taken off to the hospital and they put seven stitches um, in the wound. But you know, there was one thing that I was looking for, whether it was at that Sunday school or whether it was playing cricket or whether it was playing football, there was one big hole in my life. I wanted a father, a real father. One of my younger brothers, John, he ran away one day and, and after several hours he returned again and his father, my stepfather, embraced him and accepted him. I wanted that love. I wanted the acceptance of a father. I didn't know where it was. My real father had run away deserted my family, deserted my mother, my stepfather. Well, he was all I had. So I ran away and I hid until late at night uh, in the firewood. 
And then I came back into the house. I wanted to get welcomed. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted a father. But no, he beat me up. He kicked me. And one of my brothers said, I was afraid he was going to kick, kick you to death that day. It was so bad. Well, in Psalm 27 and verse 7, it says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. And I had the cry for a father. And one day, God was going to reveal himself as the real father that I sought for. What about you?